We need to stop Tomoe before she takes more lives. <laughs> when she began her study with me, she hid a small blade in her sleeve, and she secretly hoarded food. I can see how you could overlook those signs. Yeah. There were others. I wanted to make her my heir so badly. I blinded myself to the truth. Damn. The camp should be nearby. Perfect terrain for archers lying in wait. Keep your eyes open. So he knew all alone that she was a bit, like, it's sketchy. That's interesting. And yeah, I guess, like, even Stay in life we go through... A good place to oh. scout the camp. I was gonna say, we go through, like, a lot of thought in terms of, like, trying to cover the fact that, um... You know, someone might be lying or someone may not be what you think they are, so you just pretend that it's Up not here. true. Um... I, th I like how they put that in this, especially. Oh! We've seen this before. What do you see? Ooh. Sensei. Could be Tomoe. The Sensei and the <gasps> Ghost. I'm getting there she tired is. of you two. Your archers are dead. It's over. Ambush. Oh, damn. Go after Tomoe. I'll hold these fools off. Tomoe, this only ends one way. Ha! Keep killing yourself, Beth. Where's she going? Tomoe! <gasps> so you're old Sakai, the sensei's new pet. And you're a gifted archer who had a chance at a better life and threw it away. Is that what he told you? Tomoe. Why are we talking? So I can warn you to watch your back. My sensei tried to kill me. He'll try the same with you. Thanks for the warning, but I'm here to end this. It's already over. I have nothing. No one. Put the bow down, Tomoe. Oh my mind. god. Nah. No sign of her. I should tell Sensei Ishikawa. She's gonna be alive. Come on, man. There's a shore right there. That, gra <laughs> that graphic before as well was weird when I tried to shoot her and then I got off the horse. That was funny though. Sakai! What happened? Tomoe could have killed me, but she didn't. You let her get away. She jumped off a cliff. I saw her. You saw what she wanted you to. She sounded desperate. She is, because of us. Why does she think you'll turn on me? She doesn't. She's trying to drive a wedge between us, and it's working. No, it's not. Good. But the next time you wonder if I can do what's needed, ask yourself first. He's only trying Tomoe to get two sides of the yet. story. That's like her. Did the farmers know who you're looking for? Someone on the list. A thief. I'll help you find them. I who is this thief? She looted Clan Adachi's estate after oh, the damn. attack, stole valuable oh. heirlooms, personal items. What makes it worse is that Mai was our former servant. Three years ago, my husband caught her stealing. He wanted to have her flogged. I did what I could for her. I'm going to sell everything. I'm just waiting for the right time. Too late. He'll sell those heirlooms himself. Now take us to them. I'll pay you to leave them with me. You have no money. I have this comb. It's gold. With pearl inlay. That was a gift. It might fetch a fair price. No. We'd have our heads. Enough of this. Take us to the animals. We don't need the mercenaries alive for questioning. Just her. The more of them we eliminate, the easier it'll be to recover what's yours. Just don't be seen where they might hurt her. You'll give us away. Shut up! 
I'll be fine. I'm right here. Look, he's distracted. I'll take him. Yep. Good night. <laughs> Mm hmm go to sleep. Too close. Shush! Let me decide that. Oh, he fell right into the horse. That's lovely. Too close. Shh! Jesus! Too close. Oh, shush, Masako! Jesus! Jin, I need to speak with Mai. I'm here if you need me. Ah, uh, she's gonna kill her. You stole my family's heirlooms for those murderers. How could you betray me? I didn't. You betrayed me. Huh? Turn me away. I saved you. My husband wanted you flogged. He knew. Then you should have left with me. I was the lady of Clan Adachi. And you were a thief. I still love you. Oh shit! Then tell me who you serve. He killed my family. Wow. Then he'll kill me. I won't let him touch you. Damn. I'll take you to your family's things. <gasps> oh, I'm shooken! I did not expect that! Damn! We know the man. You are going to sell those mercenaries. You are called to keep your harem safe. When I found out you were alive, I wanted to give them back. I want to listen. I just didn't know how. Keep the calm with you. Please. For me. Promise. Jean, I want you to know, I'm not- You don't owe me an explanation. I cared for my husband. But I cared for my, too. Oh. You still do. I think I always will. The man we hunt has feelings for you. Hmm. Other than my husband and my- I've had no romances, no admirers. You sure about that? <laughs> he could have been lying, feigning sympathy to gather recruits. I just don't know who would do that. Or he could be in love and, you know, keep searching. could be like a one-time thing, like just time. psychopathic kind of. My work in of? Toyotama isn't finished. Meet me when you can. Hmm. Damn. That was deep. <laughs> I did not expect that at all. <laughs> Oh shit. Lady Masako! Speak, monk! Please stop! Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey! What do you want with Junshin? He conspired to kill my family. He's been saving refugees. And his name wasn't on the list we found. Someone left him a note at the temple. It's identical to the ones the conspirators carried. Junshin was promised supplies for his relief camps. In return, he was to provide information on my whereabouts. It's just an offer. This proves nothing. It proves he had contact with the person who killed my family. We will get to the bottom of this. By talking to Junshin. Yeah, she's kind of getting, like, blindsided by revenge. We murder these people on temple grounds. We need to find Junshin. This way. Okay. Really, Masako? There's people dead here. <sighs> Move. Sometimes I really don't the like it. Close. And so is the monk. Oh my god. Really? Is that all you can think about? <gasps> so cool. These statues kind of remind me of like when they covered um, India in Uncharted. Oh. Hoi! <laughs> Is that you? I need to get Junshin. Uh, 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 
Masako! Stand aside, Jin. You betrayed my family. Run! If we fight, the Mongols win. They already won. Really? Oh, wait! Now I remember. Years ago. Now I remember. <laughs> she was at the trailer. Damn, how the graphics have changed since then. <gasps> I like her. Oh, I like the color of her um sword grip. That's beautiful. You were my friend. Give me the monk. No. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> Come on, stop! You are defending a murderer! We agreed to talk to him! Talking never works! You promised me! My promise is to my family! You hear them coming? They are the enemy! Who <sighs> <Ooh>, ain't happy? <laughs> you gave me your word. When I looked at Junjin, all I saw were my dead grandchildren. Their faces after being cut down, and you were protecting him. So you tried to kill me? Have you lost your mind? I have lost everything! No, you've sacrificed everything for revenge. That's true. And what do you feel when you think of Juzo? Really? 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 We can't let anger consume us. Perhaps I should speak with him first. So you don't trust me? Of course I don't. Not yet. But letting me talk first will help. Then I won't stand in your way. But remember, Jin, he only needs his tongue to talk. Oh, shut up. <sighs> Consumed by revenge. Ah, there he is. There he is. Please, don't kill me. Who offered you supplies in exchange for information about Masako? She called herself L Lady Hana. Liar! Masako, wait. Who is Lady Hana? My sister. Oh, She was massacred damn. with the rest of my family. She visited me two nights ago, wore <gasps> a crimson kimono with a golden sash. I remember. She smelled of chrysanthemum. <laughs> no. I never told her anything about you. I swear it. Leave us. <laughs> My sister's <gasps> alive. She murdered the children. Why would she want to destroy your clan? I don't know. But I am going to find her. You don't have to do it alone. Ha! Jin! You I ain't helping this bitch anymore! Out. Never mind, I probably have to. Dude. That was awesome, though. Whew. But damn, I hate that woman. <laughs> no, no, no. I just don't know. Like, just no. You don't do that to me. After everything I did for you, girl, no. Okay, so, <laughs> um, as you can see, my voice is here, you can hear me, and it's obviously post-recorded, um, as I'm editing right now, and as you are probably watching right now, you're seeing just fight scenes and stuff. I'm so bad at myself because, um, unfortunately for the last part of Act 2, my microphone <laughs> wasn't on and it did not capture my big reaction to Taka dying. It didn't capture the uncle slapping me across the face. It didn't 
get the reaction of Jin just, you know, massacring the <laughs> Mongols. And most of all, it didn't capture my sobbing, crying reaction to Kage dying. I was heartbroken. I couldn't believe it. And it was just, it was terrible. And I, I, I saved all my videos I came and I was like, cool, I'm going to watch the reactions just to see like a sneak preview before... I put it together and I realized that my mic was not on <sighs> because the reactions I had was like huge and I was excited to watch it back and now it's not there because my mic wasn't on. But yeah, I do have some thoughts. Obviously, I'm going to rec I'm recording this right up right now <laughs> because just so I have my thoughts down and obviously again, you'll be seeing different videos of either me f doing my fight scenes or some of the cutscenes um and then going onwards towards the end of act 2. So, <sighs> Let's go. I actually wanted to start off by talking about the whole um, situation with Yuriko, um, who was obviously the caretaker of Jin when he was younger and is the caretaker of his home. With Yuriko, I mean, damn, like, I was just, like, so shocked. Like, obviously, it seems like she had a little bit of a thing with Jin's father or that she did like Jin's father. And I knew something was a little bit iffy, especially when, you know, she said she kept feeling lightheaded, and then she started to call Jin by, obviously, his father's name. Um, that started to be a little bit weird. I was like, hmm, is something... And especially when she said that the father taught her to ride, I was like, hmm. And they went, like, on rides together all the time, and I was like, hmm, I'm not sure about that, but okay, maybe his friends. Um, but then it may, may, like, because we obviously didn't get that resolved a little bit because she did die, and I did have a feeling that she was going to pass away because she kept coughing and she was hallucinating a lot. Yeah, that was just a whole emotional ride, I think, especially, like, just watching Jin go through that. Um, it was just really, really sad just to see, because, you know, you could tell... Especially when he was talking about his mom, he didn't want to talk about his mom because obviously it just seems like that's such a tough, touchy subject aside from the fact that, you know, the other touchy subject was his father, you know, like he never would talk about like the whole thing that happened, like the sacrifice that obviously his father did, but also the act that he thinks that he let down his father, like by obviously not saving him. So he has that heavy guilt, like whenever that brings up, he's like, no, I don't want to talk about my father like, about his death, etc., and that's a big deal. And, um, what I figured from that, especially as we did move on into the, um, final parts of Act 2, I felt that there was, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of guilt and emotion that he was holding onto while he was in that fight, but let's move on to talking about the fight. The whole fight with Ruzo and obviously setting up the fact that, you know, the Khan obviously wanted to talk to Jin, it was just, oh my gosh, so much emotion and just... I was like so terrified the whole time and I'm so annoyed that my microphone didn't record because just like I, I was so shocked that Tucker died like I had a feeling that he was gonna die like because I was like mm. especially with the whole thing that happened with um the other fight where he was fight al fighting alongside Yuna and um Jin I was like probably preparing myself for that but nothing happened so I was like okay cool but then I was thinking like maybe in another part of the game he might die and he did and that was just so heartbreaking because he like sacrificed himself for Jin and then you know like his last moment was trying to tell Jin to tell that he was trying to be brave to Yuna and that was so heartbreaking because you know Yuna has always been protective of him but he's never been able to show her that he's brave um but he was always brave like all along like surviving what happened with the mongols and stuff like that he was such a brave character and i absolutely adored him and i i absolutely miss him he's an amazing character moving on from that again with the emotion especially it built up from that so that was kind of like the first beat that led on into the major fight which was obviously getting the castle back you could tell jin was holding on to emotion he felt guilt for taka he felt guilt for just like you know a lot of things and you can tell it like that those emotions are slowly c unraveling and you know the obviously that practice as a samurai to calm the emotions was breaking down and you could really really tell that he was uh, struggling to hold all his emotions back especially when you do get to the second major fight and he does um slaughter the leader in front of his uncle um you can tell like all those emotions are running high and again even while I was fighting, I felt so torn. I was like, oh my god, like, no, don't, like, you know, 
go against, not go against Samurai Code, but you know, like I, I didn't want to disappoint the uncle. Um, but at the same time, I was like, but this is the only way we are going to beat the Mongols because it's scaring them. Like if we do it the Samurai way, they know how to defeat us. And especially because Khan says it, the Khan leader does say it, that, you know, the way that of the Samurai, they understand it, but with the ghost, they are terrified of him because he's dangerous and they don't know how to stop him. So there is obviously a way that Jin is fighting that obviously is so unique. It's a mixture of samurai and obviously the ghost techniques that he has, which is just so different. Um, but again, like, obviously, <laughs> there's two different opinions, like, whether it's right or wrong to do what they're doing. And yet, it was just tearing me in two different directions, and I was like, what am I supposed to do? But then, obviously, we eventually do go full ghost mode, and, oh, that whole segment where, and obviously, you'll see in the scenes, obviously, showing now, that, um, it was amazing, like, being able to sneak up on the guys properly, like, while they're just chilling, like, <laughs> that was interesting, like, assassinating some of them and then obviously poisoning, the, that was scary, though, because I didn't realise the wolfsbane would work instantly, so just watching it and then you walk through, like, the lines of, like, dead Mongols, it was so crazy, and that's when I felt guilt, I was like, ah, uh, I feel like we're stepping a line here, and this is another thing, especially with the whole getting the poison darts, I felt like that was crossing a line. I was like, mm, I'm not really in for this. I don't really agree with the poison darts. Like, with everything else, I thought it was okay um, to a degree. But with the poison darts, and especially with the hallucination ones, I was like, hmm, don't really know if I agree. And especially because Jin made that decision, it's obvious that he's going to really dangerous depths to... Um, unravel the plans of the Mongols, which is interesting because he's desperate. He just wants everything to go back to normal. So that was very, very interesting to see from him. And again, going back to the main fight and the fact that we have to fight Rizzo, I was sad because I really liked him before he did betray us and I did hope that he would turn a like a new leaf and become good, but I just didn't agree with him returning to our side and pretending that he was on good the whole time, especially after what he had said to Jin the whole time, especially when he first betrayed him, he was like, you know, like, I'm, I need to do this, like, I want to do this, and then he betrayed him. That hurt the whole way through, especially whenever we saw him again, I was like, nah, 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 I can't forgive you for that. So that was like, it was hard to kill him off, because I actually really liked him as a character, but the whole thing with seeing the uncle again and the uncle obviously confronting Jin, again, I do feel like Jin crossed the line and that really made me like emotional as well because it was like, yes, I want like, I want the uncle to be on our side and obviously, you know, like be the son and uncle and then, oh damn, when Jin says like, I'm not your son, oh, the emotions were high. Um, that was very, very emotional. It's so sad. And, um, just seeing Jin just plainly say it, like, obviously it's, it's obvious, like, that's his uncle, is the son. But, um, it was just, yeah, again, tearing me in two different directions. In saying that, I love the scene that takes place after, especially, oh, but I'm just gonna quickly touch, but the fact that Kage died, Oh, dude, I was sobbing to the point where my parents had to come and check on me because they thought that I was, like, someone had died, and, <laughs> like, in real life, like, like a, a friend or something, and they were like, are you okay? Like, is something wrong? And I was like, my horse died! And, yeah, they were just like, oh, okay. Like, I take deaths of animals very seriously, so when my horse died, like, Kage, Shadow, oh, that, that really killed me. Because, you know, we obviously have been with this horse for two acts, so it's just really, really sad. And I remember, like, thinking, like, as I was just playing, like, a random segment of the game, like, oh my god, like, I love this horse, like, if something happens to it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ball, and I, I did, and I'm so annoyed that it didn't capture my reaction, but yeah, I can promise you guys, I was bawling my eyes out, and I literally just, I, I have to take a breather after, because I was like, my horse, no! Anyway, continuing from that, but the twist that happens and occurs because of Jin's decision to use poison is the fact that the Mongols end up using it. And like, what a twist that is because obviously the uncle did say like, you're becoming the enemy. And essentially that does show that Jin did take a step that the Mongols would have probably taken in the future if they had the chance before Jin had done it. Um, but the fact that Jin had done it, they were able to find out what the poison was and then 
test it on people and just that's just so sad so it technically was like a turn on its head and technically turned and fell apart because of Jin so that was very interesting to see how they did that I love that they did that it was just that's a great twist to Jin's decision so I really 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 appreciate that story like turn that was really interesting and especially because the poison was used on him and we get to see that and it's like oh shit like we have to go through this now for like a small like a minute and it was just still shocking and i'm so glad that the writers did that and just oh it was so so good but yeah um i was going to talk about this before but i kind of got sidetracked with the horse and stuff um the conversation that takes place after when Yuna and Jin are on their way to obviously the temple for shelter, um, the the conversation that takes place then I absolutely love as well. Um, when Jin is talking about you know his uncle and the decisions that they have made and why they're in that like why they're in the position they're in now, um, I love the fact. That I love the fact that Jin says, like, you know, like, I am my own, like, he, you know, he made a decision that will affect the rest of his journey, especially with his uncle. So he said, like, I hope he forgives me, but that will not change who I've become now. Um, I really love that line. I think it's something like that. Like, I apologize. Like, obviously, it'll be up on the screen and you guys will be able to watch. Um, but damn, what a what a line in script it's beautiful and just so powerful as well like I hope I can gain his forgiveness but that will not change who I am so that's just so powerful and you know even though I don't agree fully with especially with the poison stuff that Jin went ahead with um I totally agree with what Jin's saying because the decisions that Jin has made has changed um a lot and it has unraveled a lot of his past and I'm glad that it has because we get to see more emotion because obviously at the beginning of the game we saw that you know he was very stoic he didn't show a lot of emotion um only in the flashbacks we saw of him as a child where he was very emotional um and then that became like shown like as act two went on so i really do think in act three we're gonna see obviously Jin come to terms with the guilt for you know going against his uncle but so I'm excited to see what happens with that and just everything to do with the war I'm excited to see like that reconciliation hopefully between the uncle and Jin and just even with Jin with his people because as I'm walking around in act three right now um there is obviously a lot of gossip and chatter about the fact that you know like he's having fights with his uncle and there's a lot of like questioning of like whether the Japanese people are going to come together and fight properly and like drive the Mongols out as they were um so I'm excited to see where this goes and I hope that <sighs> I can actually put my mic on this time but yeah let's see where it goes and I'm excited so I'll see you guys in act three take care everyone okay so my mic is finally on <laughs> again and we're gonna be doing act three because goddamn this game and I'm gonna make sure my mic is actually on for the rest of this filming <laughs> because I don't want another accident like last time to happen why were you oh. the one to marry a samurai when we were young bandits attacked our estate Hana hid with our parents I took up a sword. Oh shit. Only after I dispatched the bandits did a samurai guard arrive to help. Adachi was leading them. Hana ah. saw him as a way to realize her ambitions, but he only had eyes for me. Oh. She was jealous then. Yeah, I'm many guessing. Betrayals. I wanted to ease her heartbreak, so I helped arrange her marriage to Ikeda, and she was sent north. Did you know the man you sent your sister to live with? Yeah. Ikeda was a respected widower. People spoke well of his kindness. Kindness is a mask easily removed behind closed doors. Yeah, you boy. Jin? I want to understand why she went to such extremes to destroy you after so many years. There is only one thing to understand. Hana murdered my family, and today she will pay for it. Again, though, Jin is totally right, though. Okay, just gonna it stop here. Again, Jin hit it on the nose. Oh god, relax horse. Jin hit it on the nose with the fact that, you know, she obviously did plan in good, in a good, like, thought, in an arranged marriage to send the sister off to another man who she thought was. But again, she had no idea who this man was. And the word of mouth of kindness, again, it's like a mask that can be easily removed. We have seen this in real life. Um, and just like, you know, in general with different characters. So... 
you know, and obviously back in those days it was like, oh, arranged marriage, like word of mouth is usually better sometimes to hear of other people's personalities and stuff. So, you know, it's sad that um, the sister had to go through that. And who knows what she went through and like what that man did to her. So um, I'm kind of excited to see like her end of the story. And hopefully we get like a few answers before... <sighs> Masako um, kills her because we all know that Masako usually kills the people before they explain. <laughs> so let's hope. Hana, show yourself. Oh damn! Little you sister, you let me think I buried you. Who was it really? A peasant woman killed by the Mongols. Shit! Did you weep for me? You have taken everything. Daughters and grandchildren. Not nearly enough. The Mongols robbed me of Adachi's death. And you cheated yours. But finally, I will take everything. Damn, okay. Kill them. She's very jealous, I'm guessing. You murdered my children. My grandchildren. Damn. Destroyed my family. A small price to pay for what you've done. I have done nothing. You stole everything. Drove me from our home. Took the life that was rightfully mine. Left me with that abusive drunk in this frozen land. Oh. You would have to suffer an eternity of pain to understand the life I've lived. The life you forced on me. None of that is my fault. It is. And damn you for acting as if it isn't. You've come to kill me, so finish this. It will be your only kindness. Damn. I can't end your suffering, but you can. Oh, damn. Now, you have nothing. Oh. <laughs> damn, I did not expect that. I never mourned my family. I've tried to honor them. Meditate on treasured memories. But she consumes them. Even now. I have nothing left. No. You've accomplished what you set out to do. You have honored your family, given them justice. It is revenge. Now you can find peace. Really that fulfilling? But yeah, this I hope she finds peace. Does not lead to peace. Mm. Where does it lead? Good one. I don't know. Emptiness? I have to continue walking it. Find out. I don't want you to go. I must. Oh. But I will be there when you need me. Oh, bless. I know sometimes I don't like her, but that's very kind of her, even through all that she's going through. Damn. Yeah, again, that it's that because even from the beginning, I was thinking like she's not gonna feel fulfilled. We know the story of what revenge usually brings people and particular characters who have sought that path. Um, I mean, we saw it recently with the whole thing that happened with um, uh, Last of Us Part 2. Um, there's no fulfillment, um, whether it's the feeling the guilt of someone's death, whether it's trying to bring justice to that particular person or people in this case. Um, there's never a chance that you'll find fulfillment because yes there's like that maybe perhaps that inch of relief that that person is no longer there but mainly it's just working through grief and they have to find that inner peace of letting that particular person or people go because obviously it's like any other death not in terms of revenge but in any other death you have to work through it you have to um find um 
not the worth in living again, but maybe like the purpose and maybe just redefine what it is that's important in your life. Um, and I don't know, that happened to me when um, a particular person passed away in my family and I, it took me a long time to come to terms with it because I was very young when I lost this particular person. Um, so again, for different people, it's very different. So from Lady Masako, it may take some time for her to find that, you know, maybe not the reason to live, but maybe a purpose because, you know, her purpose was being a grandmother, being a wife, um, and, you know, just being there for her family. So now that none of that is there, she, um, doesn't really feel like she has a purpose. So I hope that she does find that fulfillment in her own way. Like, again, like, I know <laughs> that she wasn't- she wasn't my favourite character, in all honesty, at multiple times during this, like, her story, but it's understandable because of the fact that she was seeking revenge, she was blinded by her, um, hunger to obviously bring about, um, change oh. for her family. Sorry, I didn't see it. I hear you're planning to take back Cedar Temple. We've been training hard. They're ready. I recognize some faces here. Uh, from Akashima. I sent messengers to Kushi Temple, but no one came. After all we did there. We can free see the temple That's without sad. Them. Yeah, we did so much for Kushi Temple. Couldn't they at least spare people? Or are they just too afraid? That's just sad. You think these people can take back the temple? We could handle it on our own. Why risk their lives? Cedar Temple can be a beacon for all of Tsushima. Everyone who takes part in the attack will be a messenger of hope. We can't carry this message alone. This victory has to be theirs. When do we ride, Norio? At dawn, my lord. Let's do it. You have supporters, Norio. They remember the Guardian, and they know why we ride for Cedar Temple. They're fortunate you fight for them. We should get off the road. This way. Ooh, this feels so good. We're getting close. Breathe, Norio. You can't fight if you hold your breath. <laughs> How could you tell? I know you well enough by now, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, I love Norio as a character. He's so cool. We got this. We can do this. The temple is yours. The last time I was here, my brother, Hochi, the abbot, they were all alive. Starting today? You can rebuild. Come with me to the main hall. I have to make sure the Mongols did no lasting damage. Norio! Lord Sakai! What's wrong? Do not go inside the main hall. Get a hold of yourself. Whatever the Mongols destroyed, we can rebuild. The hall looks fine from the outside. It looks from the outside. That's what they did on the inside. Nothing damaged or stolen. <laughs> Norio. Angel? <gasps> when they took you out of the pit, I thought... <gasps> His brother was alive? Was promised to spare you. If I told them everything. I'm here, Angel. It's all right now. Oh, oh my god. I told them about the admin. Oh my god, they tortured him. I held on. To see you. Oh my god. But I can't live like this. Yes, you can. Oh my god. 
Oh my god, that is so sad. Oh, my heart breaks for Norio. Oh my god. Oh. And the brother was right. That's no way to live. Jesus Christ. His name is Karcho. The one who burned my brother and cut off his limbs. Jesus. Karcho. He's among the dead. Not yet. Oh, damn. I can find out where this Mongol coward is. But then I'll need your help. You'll have it. Of course. I'm gonna help. And the snow lets <sighs> up. Oh, that really, that really got to me. God damn. Just like, I can't imagine what it must have been like for Norio to wake up. Not wake up, sorry. To walk into that room and then see his brother was alive the whole time. God damn. Yeah, we're totally continuing Norio's story. <sighs> I just need a breather for a second. Damn. Damn, Norio. Where do we find him? Fort Shoni. You're sure he's the one responsible? When I find him, he will pray for a quick death and his cries will go unheard. If the situation were reversed, I have a feeling Angel would forego revenge. If it were reversed, I'd be dead and the Guardian would live. Tsushima would be better off. Go back to see the temple. Let me take care of this. You're not talking me out of it. I don't want you to become... Like what? You? Like so Ooh. many others who have been changed. Damn, Noria was like, what? Become like you? Like Damn, that's hard, but it's true. Uh-oh. Is he gone? Far out. Yep. Knew it. Norio. <sighs> oh my god. Did he do that? Oh no. Jesus Christ, Norio. My lord, please help! He he's gone mad. What happened? Norio. At first, when I saw him, I thought my prayers were answered, but... Return to see the temple. I'll handle this. Jesus Christ. Norio. Seek refuge in Amida Buddha. Who did this? Norio. Jesus Christ, Norio did all this? Oh my god. You do not have the courage to do it. Burn! Burn for your crimes, butcher! I love how it's like forcing him to walk. You can't run to him. You once told me you would never swing your Naginata in hatred. I did what the ghost would do. And now Harsha is gone. Uh -oh. I'm not going back to see the temple. Not after this. Where will you go? It doesn't matter. He was still alive when I lit the wood. When he screamed, it filled me with joy. And I would do it again. I'm no longer a monk. You don't get to give up. We all have regrets and broken promises. But this island needs you. The last warrior monk of Cedar Temple. was before this I'm not asking you to go back I'm asking you to keep your faith and move forward thank you Jin I'll see you at Cedar Temple <laughs> easy horse I'm just peeling a mandarin where are we headed? North of Umugi Cove. She sent word to meet at an old gambling den. Might be a good spot for an ambush. We have the advantage. The Mongols turned against her. She is desperate. Desperate enemies are dangerous. Because they are unpredictable. But Tomoe has two choices. 
enlist our help or betray us. <clears throat> That's true. You spent time with her. What do you think? She can help us wipe out her archers. The risk is worth it. You're gambling with your life. She could have killed me in Jogoku. And lost exactly. me. This way, she <clears throat> gets us both. If she doesn't ambush us, we hear her out. And if this planned attack is real, we cooperate. After that, we'll deal with her. She betrayed her people. She will answer for it. And I'm guessing you will... give her the answer and punish her. What will you say when you see her? I have nothing to say to Tomoe. You don't want answers? Oops, I didn't you go on the bridge. spoken since she joined the enemy. <laughs> Any chance of talking ended the moment she turned on me. Yes, but you attacked her. We've discussed this before. If I was here to kill you, you'd already be dead. Damn. Get over here. You should wait out here. Not a chance. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Always so sure of yourself. The one thing you never had to teach me. Your archers are planning an attack. Where and when? Umugi Cove. Heading there now. Why tell us? The Khan betrayed me. I'm taking my archers away. And if we don't help you stop them, they'll wipe out Umugi Cove. I don't believe you. Do nothing. And watch what happens. Damn it. The Mongols followed me. Damn you, Tomoe! Yeah, I don't think this may have been her. No more traps, Tomoe. This wasn't a trap. She fought back against the Mongols, Sensei. To deceive us, so we lower our guard. If I want to put an arrow in you, there's nothing you can do to stop me. Enough! Umugi Cove could be under attack. Don't fall behind. Me? Ooh, I'm pretty proud of how that all went down. Heck yeah! Usually I'm not that good, so I'm proud. Does this guy have a helmet? Yeah, he has a helmet. Am I going the right way? Yeah, I'm going the right way. Cool, just making sure. Heck yeah! I feel really good about myself right now. <laughs> My archers. The moment we attack, they'll retreat into town. Use it to defend against us. Innocent people will die. See the barrels in their carts? I'll circle behind. One flaming arrow. Once you shoot, they'll be on you. If you stay back in the tree line... I might miss. I need to get close. Let me undo the damage I've done. Go. Damn. She might get hit. You trust her? I trust her desire for revenge. So 
So that's how she stayed one step ahead of us. You taught her well, Sensei. I know. Get ready. Now! Not bad, Sakai. Where's Tomoe? I don't know. Was she wounded? Tomoe! Near the end of the fight, I saw her by the archway over there. That leads straight into Umugi Cove. If any Mongols try to retreat that way... Maybe she gave chase. Cool. The only oh. knows that killing her archers won't erase her crimes. But she got her revenge. Is that all she got? She fought alongside us. That will mean something once we defeat the enemy. Forget the Mongols. What does she want in Umugi Cove? There's not much here besides thieves and cutthroats. Damn it, and smugglers. She needs a boat to get off the island. Ah. She helped save Umugi Cove. The Mongols were hunting her. We gave her safe passage to a way off the island. We're always one step behind. But there's still time to stop her. Come on. Damn. Wait. Sensei Ishikawa, we have judged each other harshly. But the Buddha tells us that our greatest enemies can be our best teachers. I am grateful for your teaching and for the chance to fight by your side. A final time, I have been your student. I would have become your daughter. Aww. But the way of the bow is behind me now. What lies ahead? I am like an arrow shot from a bow. Who knows where the wind will take me? It's over. Maybe she'll reach Kyoto after all. If she were anyone else, I'd say that's impossible. We still have a war to finish. A home to rebuild. I have no more lessons to give in this life. Except one. Promise me, you won't repeat my mistakes. Oh, bless. I promise, Sensei. I'm kind of, oh, that was really good. I'm glad it ended that way. And I was hoping that he'd let her go. Um, yeah, I think they just both judged each other harshly for each other's decisions. Um, you know, Tomoye did say, you know, like she did give those people a quick death. In reality, yes, but it may look badly from a different perspective, which was from obviously the sensei and perhaps Jin and other people from the Japanese side. Um, but, um, ah, oh, that makes me really happy though, and I'm happy he let her go, because I know how much anger he had. Ooh! Oh, that's cool. Oh, if only it was the full mask. Um, ooh. Half bow die. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. But it won't match my thing, so. 
Yeah, you can't change the longbow colour, that's annoying. She can yeah. take care of herself. Aww. You taught her well, Sensei. Um, but I'm glad he let her go, though, too, because I know he had a lot of anger for her, but I think deep down he loved her as if she were his own daughter. Tomoe was a good student. Exactly. Because of you. Um, and, you know, yes, yeah, she made some bad decisions, um, but, again, she was trying to survive. From any point of view, it would Tomoe look bad. could have become a great samurai. Oh. Less. But yeah, I think kind of like Jin with Tomoye, she just, you know, she just felt like that wasn't the life for her. Sakai. <laughs> I, I'm trying to talk here, Sensei. Um, but yeah, I think he really cares about her. And I'm glad. I like the way that ended. I was really happy because it's kind of a. Tomoye could have become a great samurai. Okay, I'm just gonna walk over here. But um, I think it was great with the way they ended that story because you know again like I was going to say he started off his story with a lot of anger against Tomoye but like towards the end you could see how much he cared about her and how hurt he was more than angry um I actually want to take a photo so I'm gonna Lord Shimura raised you well oh, oh. thanks 